Hey guys, it's your boy and we are back with another comparison, the last one. So we have the Gamora versus Spider-Gwen in this video. Gamora, the reigning, defending speed queen of AVX and ABL, an amazing in-world boss legend. Today we are comparing her to the newest Spider-Gwen. So let me just take you through uh, the builds and what we have. So they both have max builds, exactly the same. Artifacts the only uh, differentiator. All the stuff is maxed out. Critical rate, uh, damage. We will be switching the striker. It will be Black Widow tier four uh, with a really good build. So the good thing is that artifact none of them actually apply. The artifact of Spider-Gwen does not apply in terms of damage to ABX or ABL bosses. Plus the same thing happens with Gamora with the exact same build. We will use the tier four Black Widow striker. By the way, if you have a tier four Black Widow with say a Rage or a Mighty Rage then she is the best striker even i think with the energy if you don't have a tier 4 black widow with good build then thor becomes the second best okay that's how it is gamora's artifact also does not work in abx and abl so basically both of these queens speed queens they don't have artifact which is a crazy thing and gamora being so op even without that and spiragwen being in the meta even without that is an amazing feat now, there's one more thing uh, about the rotation for Sparagwen. As we did in the last Alliance Battle Legend video, we'll do exactly the same. So we'll start with 1, 3, 4, delay cancel, 2 delay cancel into the 5. And then 2, 1 you can use. For the 6 kill rotation, we can go 6 kill. You can see the spiral tingle on the silk, you know, and then you cancel. So you get some extra damage and then followed by the 1, 3, 4, 2, 5 rotation. Then you can go to cancel one or one cancel two in the end just to charge up the tier four skill. It's easy, uh, pretty easy actually. The cards uh, and everything looks like this. It's not just about the cards actually. I just want to show you the comparison first because I would like you to know. Plus she also has paralyze so she can cancel this season. She does not have silence and burn so for that she will need the tier four strikers. For burn I've, of course she's gonna need probably iron man with a justice as well. So we will go there. I'm not sure if uh, Black Widow in the third skill has burn. So first turn we have Nick Fury and Fox, which is I think the best team up for Sparagwen Alliance Battle uh, Extreme. Like, you know, it's Alliance Battle Extreme. I have not said that in quite a long time. <laughs> Alliance Battle Legend comes out much more smoother. Anyways, uh, and I'm also actually waiting for Secret Invasion because Fury is gonna get the tier three. I wonder if, uh, the tier 3 skill of Fury somehow becomes a, you know, a passive for characters. I was just wondering about that. Although one thing is sure, that might not happen. Because he right now gives 50% uh, uh, from the leadership, as well as 55% damage dealt to villain types on the tier 2 passive to the heroes. With the new uniform, I think that's gonna increase. The leadership might become 55 or 60. I hope it becomes 60. And the 55% damage that we have on the tier 2 passive will become 60% when the new uniform comes around. So Fury's uniform is, is going to be a must-have. This uniform also was a must-have. It's a big, big improvement over the base because I think it's about 10% in total, but it matters a lot. On the other hand, uh, I think Fury tier 3 will be insanely good for GBR because you can then use him finally there as well as uh, uh, World Boss Legend. I think World Boss Legend is going to make uh, a lot of things easier. Speed category, especially, specifically you, if you're using a hero character, even Gamora, I think, for some time, 55% damage dealt is insane, even with this uniform. And with the new uniform, that's just going to increase. So I'm, I'm excited for the Secret Invasion update. Not really for the series itself, but just for Nick Fury and some more stuff. I heard that rumors that uh, War Machine might get the tier 4 because I think it's also in the series. So I feel we might get Fury Tier 3 and War Machine Tier 4 with that. Unless there is some other character which also gets a cameo and gets a Tier 4. So I think that's going to be a big update. Just, just so you guys know, you know, I'm kind of excited about that. Uh, it's around the corner. I'm not sure if that's going to be a really good series. I'm not really interested. But it's Marvel and we got to watch all of them. <laughs> so that's how it is. Anyways, uh, sorry about all that pep talk. Uh, no promotions. <laughs> Not yet, unless I get sponsored. Uh, <laughs> we'll see what we can do about it. So we uh, have 40 seconds remaining. 
we have uh, 11.8 million around that we just hit 12 so yes it's gonna be easy for you to hit 12 million with this girl but she needs to score about 15 16 if she need uh, if she will be able to compete with gamora okay with the brilliant rage of course normal rage it's uh, uh, again it's gonna be exactly the same sort of scenario because gamora is insane in abx and i will show you the run she is super super cool and on the other hand one more thing that gamora is also uh like yeah the speed queen and all but much easier to use compared to i think sparagwen sparagwen is also but compared to gamora gamora is way too easier so we'll end up about 13.74 let's say 14 million on a really good run after that let's try gamora now so uh, I did another run actually with Valkyrie, so I, then I thought it was speed day. So we have Shuri and we have uh, what's what's her name Wave for the best team up. I think this is what this was the best team up for Gamora, I believe. So that's how we are using it, and she's way easier. Really, really easy character. Ever since actually uh, the uniform came with the Requiem with the villain uniform, she was still very useful back then. So I'm kind of happy. For the fact that we did have not changed Gamora a lot with the uniform. She still has those amazing instant cancel on most of these skills. She has those very very quick cancel. And I think that is the difference uh, Gamora makes from like to her and to the other characters. You know that's why cancels are very important. And I do think that Sparagwen's damage could have been much better. Again if the awakened skill was instant cancel. Gamora the Awakened skill is instant cancel and you can see she is destroying all of this. I do believe if Gam uh, if Sparagon actually had sort of like the Gamora thing where you can instant cancel and get all the damage from the transcend skill, I do believe that she would have been the best speed character in the whole game. And she, I think the score would increase about a million at least, you know, with all that damage coming out. So I wish... Some of the characters were like that, but it's not a privilege for all of the characters to have sort of mechanism. But it's alright, it's a game and we have diversity right here. Anyways, uh, let's just go. The run is going pretty smoothly. I'm not even watching what's going on. As you can see, it, there is a lot of stuff going on uh, right here. And I lost all of the damage. I literally lost all of the damage from the 5th skill. Still, Gamora hit 12 million at the moment, which is amazing. So, you can see the OP-ness of Gamora and I do think that I think either Luna Snow or Kamala Khan with the Miss Marvel's uniform with the tier 4 later on might be the only ones to do that. So, again, Gamora is an amazing option if you want a tier 4. Uh, sadly, there's one catch though. Sadly, you will not be able to use Gamora on the human female days. Okay, human female is the issue with that. That's the reason why people have been using Shadow Shell. And that is the reason. Again, I missed all the damage from the fifth, fifth skill. So that is two rotations, almost two rotations worth of damage that I missed. Absolutely, this run could have been way better. I messed up and my proc is sort of early now as well. So yeah. It's 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 far far away from being a really good run, but it's a good run, but not really a good run. <laughs> whatever whatever that means, but yeah, fifteen point five. We have beaten you know Sparagwen by a miles. This is a really really bad run. I should say yeah, it's not a good run. It's not a good run at all. Still, almost sixteen million, with missing those two rotations full of damage. She is the queen. Gamora still reigns supreme over everyone. But that does not mean that Sparagwen is bad. She did her job. Gamora is insane, obviously. Uh, that's how the, the case is. Sparagwen still held her spot. Okay, she's still nice. It's not that bad. She might be the best after Gamora. And I do believe that if you have a brilliant tree, I believe Black Widow, she might score a lot. But she scores a lot more than Black Widow in ABL. Again, for the strikers, as I said, for burn season, you're going to need Iron Man because you get the burn as well as the justice striker. If you want to use her in ABX, I'm talking about ABX. If you have Gamora, then you're totally safe. You don't have to worry about that. As you can see, Iron Man with the four skill on striker has the burn. So anyways, we'll uh, maybe cover that down. We don't have to do that. So that is the only case if you don't have Gamora. If you have Gamora, then you don't actually need Sparagwen for ABX. 
So with that, Sparagoin is gonna stay only Alliance Battle Legend. Let me know what you think about the video. Let me know what you think about both of these characters. Amazing. Still waiting for Luna, still waiting for maybe more speed characters in the line. Let me know what you think about all of that. And as always, if you do enjoy the content, I hope to see you again. Take care. See ya.